So how to study for the MCAT. What I'm going to do in this video is lay out how I went about my studying and talk about what I think I did right and what I think I could have done better and how you can apply what I learned to your own studying. Basically the way I see it, MCAT studying breaks down into three main parts. One, make a plan. Two, identify your strengths and weaknesses and adjust your plan as necessary. And three, learn the test and other minor details. So this video is all about part one, make a plan. And this itself breaks down into three subparts, how, what, and when. How long should you study? What materials should you use? And when should you take the test? So how long should you study? There's no definitive answer for this. Everyone is different. My advice is to give yourself an objective evaluation of your abilities and decide what works best for you based on what you've done studying-wise in the past for finals and midterms. I studied for three weeks. I estimate to spend about 80 hours total. I started studying about one month before the test and I finished a week early. So in that last week, I took an extra practice test. I did 30 minutes to an hour of review each day and just generally tried to stay as fresh and relaxed as possible. And I would definitely recommend wrapping up your studying a few days before the test just so you can relax. Now, I know that just three weeks sounds outrageous, but I knew that would be all that I'd need, and if you ask my friends, they'd probably tell you that they were surprised that I studied at all. Uh, I have pretty much a photographic memory, and the science classes are my best subjects. For finals and midterms, all I need were a few hours of studying the day of, and I'd be set. That's just something I've always been able to do, and because I knew that, I knew that I wouldn't need the average amount of time to study for the MCAT. So basically, just give yourself an honest and objective evaluation of what your abilities are and plan accordingly. Some of my clients spend six months studying for it, others spend three months, some people spend a year, uh, which I can't really recommend. Uh, memories have a shelf life, and a year would result in decay of those memories, so I really wouldn't spend any longer than six months, to be honest. And, and remember, how long you study for doesn't get reported anywhere on your application or on the MCAT, so Really take the time to learn what you, you can do and uh, give yourself the time you need to study for it. So what materials should you use? There's really no wrong answer to this and there are lots of options. I cobbled together a course from a bunch of different sources and I think that not relying on any one particular source gave me a much firmer understanding of the material. So I bought a uh, thick Kaplan book and that was my main biology study tool. For Orgo, uh, I had a really tough professor, so I pretty much just relied on my courses, and as you can tell from the current state of my channel, most of the videos being organic chemistry, that's something I really excel at. Towards the end of my studying, I felt I still needed work on verbal, so I bought a, uh, a skinnier Princeton review book for its passages. For practice tests and diagnostics, I would almost exclusively rely on the ones offered by the AAMC, for reasons of validity and predictability, and I'll get into that later in part three. Um, but anyways, I took three AAMC practice tests, the free one and two others. For physics and just general MCAT studying about the way the MCAT poses questions and the way you should go about attacking them and the general mindset you need to have for the test, hands down the best thing I did was use this website called wikipremed.com, and there's a link to that in the video description. Uh, go there, check it out. If there's nothing else you do from this video, go to that site. It's a project by the name by a guy called John Wetzel who scored a 38 on the test and now he teaches the course. Teaches an MCAT course. Basically he decided that studying for the test can become quite expensive to the tune of several thousand dollars and he wanted to give students a cheaper option so he came up with this online course that just costs a suggested donation. He has videos and flashcards and problem sets, and he's actually linked his course with uh, exam crackers, which is something I didn't do, but I can only imagine it would make your understanding of the material even better. So yeah, it's, it's phenomenal, and I would definitely go there and check it out. So to sum up, basically just choose one main source, be it Kaplan or exam crackers, Wiki Premed or whatever, and then choose an alternate source, my channel. Um, just hearing things from a different voice is sometimes all you need to understand it a little bit better. So if you find yourself struggling to understand a, a particular topic, 
turn to your alternate source. So when should you take the MCAT? There are two main considerations for this, course load and the med school application cycle. So I initially intended to take the MCAT in January because I figured, hey, I won't have any classes to get in the way of my studying, and if I don't get the score I like, I can always take it again sometime in the spring. I did not go through with this. For one, I realized that studying for the MCAT was something I just wanted to do once. I wanted to do it right the first time, uh, not just for admissions purposes, but because it's a big time commitment and it's really intense. And two, I just could not motivate myself to study during break. For whatever reason, I just could not do it. I don't know why. So realizing these things, I switched my test date to mid-April in the middle of a pretty busy semester. I was in a couple of upper levels and second semester orgo. I had three labs with a paper due each week. So glad when that semester ended, three papers a week. Uh, I was coaching youth softball. I was taking care of my stepkids and doing all their kid stuff, homework and parent-teacher conferences and clubs. And I was still squeezing in some leisure time for myself, like running and biking. So needless to say, I was really busy which I think a lot of people would try to shy away from during their MCAT studying, and that's fine. That gets back to my point about really knowing yourself and giving yourself an honest evaluation. Uh, but for me, the, it, it didn't really matter, and it actually helped that I was so busy with these upper-level courses, because in session, I was able to motivate myself. I had no problems at all motivating myself, and that's really key. Uh, the upper levels I was in, genetics and biochem, while not explicitly required on the test, do help. They appear pretty frequently on the MCAT. Um, I actually had an orgo test two days before the MCAT, but I figured, hey, I need to know this stuff for the MCAT anyway, so does studying for it really matter? So taking a couple, couple of upper level courses, maybe with not so many labs as I was in, is something that might help you. Uh, just something to consider. Now, about the test date as it pertains to the med school application cycle. The primary application opens up, you can submit it on June 1st all the way up to October 15th. But when you apply matters a whole lot in the application cycle, and starting in late July, early August is when it starts to become late to apply despite the fact that it's open until October. Now, it takes a month to get your test scores, so the latest I would take the MCAT is a mid-June test date. Uh, that means you'd get your scores in mid-July. Now, you can have the rest of your application filled out and all ready to go, and I would do that if you're planning on taking the test in mid-June. Uh, you can actually submit before you get your scores, but it's a little bit risky because you don't know how competitive your scores will be uh, at the schools you've applied to, so I wouldn't do that. But it takes a few weeks for your primary application to be verified, so if you're not all ready to go and you take the test in mid-June and you get your application in in early August, it takes a few weeks, you'll get your secondary sometime around September, um, and schools will actually have already started interviewing by that time. By the time you get your secondary applications in, if you're not proactive about this and take a mid-June test date, schools will already be interviewing, so that's just something to watch out for. Um, now, as your test date approaches, you may think, well, geez, I'm really not ready, but I also don't want to apply late. So what you need to do is weigh the pros and cons. If you think an extra month might change your score from, say, a 29 to a 33, I think I would spend that extra month because I think that point differential would outweigh the risks of applying late. Applying late isn't a death sentence, but it does negatively affect your chances of getting getting accepted. But say if you're going to improve from a 29 to a 30 or a 31, um, I'm not sure I would spend that extra month. Uh, an extra point or two really isn't going to make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things and you've just now um, committed yourself to applying late. So mid-June test date, latest I would take. Uh, get your applications in by the end of July at the latest.